it's Tristan back with another video. I will also be posting a video of Mickey's tonight. Today we're going to be starting in Zephaniah chapter 1. First one lets us know that they're the lineage of Zephaniah. It traces all the way back to his great-great-grandfather, Hezekiah. We're going to be starting in verse 2. And it starts it off a little bit rough. But there is a conviction that has to take place. It says here, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, says the Lord. A judgment coming. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, says the Lord. All things. Fishes, birds, people, stumbling blocks, and the wicked. All will be destroyed. There will be a judgment taking place. And this verse really interests me because I was already studying before I read this. A part where it mentions the wicked and the stumbling blocks. Where Jesus mentions in Matthew 13, 41. So in this verse, it says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. So, the things that offend, the stumbling blocks, and them that do iniquity, the wicked, both will be gathered out of the kingdom of heaven. I think that's a beautiful thing, putting the judgment in that perspective. Because there's all these stumbling blocks that get in our way that we struggle with. And just to think that there will be a time where you don't have to struggle with the lies of Satan is going to be such a beautiful time. And that's what I want. So it says, next verse, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, and the name of the Temerums from with the priest. So, I feel, in my opinion, that Zephaniah is calling out certain people, saying, hey, you need to repent. There might be idolatry taking place, false gods. People have to repent. They have to ask God for forgiveness. And realize there might be a way that they're sinning. Realize that there will be a judgment coming. And this judgment coming, and this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this may be referring to the great white throne judgment mentioned in Revelation 20. We're going to start in verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for him. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The small and the great. I like how it mentions that. Because, like Zephaniah said, Jerusalem, Baal, uh, Judah, everybody. God's going to be judging you. There's going to be judgment for all people. And it says, the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Because the ones of lawlessness, of iniquity, that will not stand. And something that I'm thinking may, may or may not, but in my opinion, I feel this may be referring to around the time that the Great White Throne Judgment and what Zephaniah refers to in this same judgment. It says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So, I feel like these are all connected in a way. Because it says the graves shall hear his voice. And I feel like 
Zephaniah referring to a time when everything will be destroyed. And then Revelation talking about the great white throne judgment. We're going to have to answer to God. We're going to, like Nikki talked about tonight, that we're going to have to bow our knee. Every knee shall bow. And it says here, like I just mentioned, the graves. So we have a time where everything is destroyed. Everybody's in the graves. I don't know. I don't know what exactly, but there might have been like a void between the time that people were judged and the time everything was destroyed. Because it says the ones that are in the graves, which I hope I'm understanding these two verses correctly. If not, I'm just a man and need reproof. And on that note, we're going to be reading a couple more verses. And it says, And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and that swear by Malcolm. In the next verse, And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him, these people are going to be judged also. And what interests me was the word inquired in this verse. Nor inquired for him. I said, what does that mean? And I used my Strong's Concordance. It has a definition in the back. I looked at the word inquired and the number for it. And it led me to the Hebrew and Chaldee definition. And right here, we have 1875. It says, this word inquired could mean to tread or frequent, or usually, usually to follow for pursuit or search. So we have to pursue, and we have, or, or we have to search God. We have to inquire for Him, because if we don't, we will be judged according to our works, as Revelation mentions. And we want to turn back to Him. Turn back to the Lord, not turn away from Him. We want to search for the Lord. I really like how this verse emphasizes how there are people that deny Him. <clears throat> and I really appreciated everybody that watched my video. And I hope everyone has a blessed night.